what are we talking about today? So we're talking about um, AI, generative AI in sales, in the sales okay. industry. Definitely a lot of information, kind of a general consensus over, I feel like, okay, whether you're a lead generator or a sales rep or a sales manager, I think that all of these, you know, different roles within the sales industry are kind of finding, let's say, more or less the same ways to use tools like ChatGPT to, um, you know, ease their workflow and things like that. In a sales role in general, I guess we can all agree that there's a lot of administrative tasks and there's your kind of like repetitive, you know, things like, you know, researching leads and qualifying the leads and then sending a cold email, calling cold calling and repeating follow up, follow up, right? So there's a lot of like repetitive process that goes on. Um, and, you know, they're finding that ways to, um, shorten that process or, or automate that process with, with uh, AI tools like ChatGPT, right? And so like we've been talking, uh, there are a couple of particularly really good cases, examples that they're using um, prompt chains or prompt theories that kind of go step by step through the process to help them get from point A to point you know, the all the way down the line by running through a series of prompts. Um, so we can kind of take a look at them. Sorry, before you start, yeah. what is the chain so what is the thing that they're trying to do with the chain? So, well, a couple of different things, but like the first one that we can start with is generating cold emails. Okay. okay. So ahead. this is something that every sales rep is going to do just completely. Okay. Well, actually, yeah. So like one of the the guys that I used his example, his, his name is Patrick Dane. He's a sales and lead generator coach, right? Okay. And so he's kind of coaching sales teams how to generate more leads, let's say. Um, yeah. And so he really thinks that cold emails are the way to get people on the phone these days. Okay. Um, full disclosure. I used to be in sales once upon a time. Okay. And my sales manager, I just remember like was all about cold calling, cold calling. Right. But okay. I mean, let's, let's admit the fact that we're in an age of technology. Right. So I always kind of push back on the fact that, um, cold emails, I mean, emails are a really great way to get clients on the phone in the first place, right? Without just having, you know, because a lot of people don't answer their phone when a random number calls. So generating cold emails is like happening all the time in the sales space, right? And um, Dr. Bing agrees that it's probably one of your best bets. So he's using chat GBT in combination with emailing software, right? Like MailChimp or Hunter.io is the one that he, he was um, suggesting to speed up the cold emailing process. Okay, so in his example, he kind of went back and forth between the two interfaces, ChatGPT and Hunter.io. And um, his first prompt was to first find companies that he that he's trying to target, right? So for the example, just FYI, we're going to be using like HR companies, HR SaaS companies, um, because he's a let's he's giving the example of a freelancer selling digital marketing services. Okay. And so his first prompt was find the top HR companies in the US and provide links to their websites. Providing the links to their website was important for him because then he's going to go and insert that into his mail. And then that email software is going to extract the specific email that he could target, right? He filters through the emails, he finds the people he wants to email, and then he goes back to ChatGBT. And first he starts with the subject line, right? So his prompt was create five variations of this subject line generate more leads with content marketing, right? Um, just to kind of note here, and then it gives him like a list of five, you know, uh, possible subject lines that he could include in the title or the subject in his email, right? Um, so I thought that the five options was a really good idea because personally me, when I use ChatGPT, I, you know, if you ask it for five options from the beginning, you're gonna get a higher likelihood of one that you like, right? And the one that you can possibly use without having to say, give me another option, give me another option, give me another option, right? And it's kind of like regenerating. So the fact that he asked for five right off the top kind of gives him a selection to choose from. Um, something, something else that I really like doing here is when I'll ask for a bunch of headlines. So I'll say like, look, give me 10 headlines around this idea. Um, so it gives me 10 and then I'll say, okay, I really like two and three for this reason. And I don't like seven and four for this reason. Can you now mm. give me more options? And it only yeah. works a couple of times, but kind of giving it this, I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'll, I'll know it when I see it. You can kind of yeah. narrow in by kind of saying, okay, I like that one, I like that one, I don't like that one, I don't like that one. I mean, it doesn't keep working, but, but you can get like a couple of rounds out of it and get a little bit. Closer. Yeah, yeah, feedback, right? Like kind of giving it feedback and letting it bounce off of that. Like, yeah, I like that. I found that that works as well. Um, yeah, so now he's got the subject line. He enters it into his um, mailing software, and then he goes back to ChatGPT to ask, for the body of the email, right? So write me a cold email to the marketing team at Mercer, um, which was an example um, about how I can help them generate more leads with content marketing, et cetera, et cetera. He, I mean, he gave a pretty detailed prompt, which is great because, you know, as we've been discussing, like the better the input, the better the output. 
So he kind of um, gave them some points to include, um, you know, what his value propositions are and things like that. A detailed email. He liked it. You know, he said he said that it got him about sixty to seventy percent of the way there. He had to edit the rest of it, you know, to kind of like fit it to his need. Then was able to enter that into his emailing software. Then he goes back to ChatGPT and asks, um, write an email. Write me an email, assuming that this prospect does not respond. Okay, so now it's kind of taking the original email and turning it into a response and saying something, you know, like, hey, I hope all is well. I see you didn't respond to my last message. Here's a follow up email. Right. So generating several different emails that he can then send in like one basically chain through his emailing software, which is going to set up to automate the process. You know, if you don't get a response within three days send this follow-up. If no response, yep. then send this follow-up, et cetera, and so on. So yeah, I mean, he he had success in it. Like I, like he said, uh, it got him about 60 to 70% of the way there. One of the you know things that he had to kind of follow up with on the follow-up, it was a little too long. So he decided to say, rewrite it and make it only three sentences, right? Which just to kind of point out there, like about the input output, like if he would have maybe said that in the first place, that been a little bit more specific with the first prompt, he might not have had to go back and forth so many times with the emails, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think rewriting stuff in three sentences as a follow-up prompt is kind of pointless because <laughs> you're, you're wasting all of the initial work that's gone into it. No data on how well this campaign performed. This is him giving advice, but it's not actually, he's not actually saying, okay, um, this is a campaign I then went out and ran and X, Y, Z. I think this is really interesting because he's, he's using ChatGPT here for the entire outcome of getting in touch with the company. So mm -hmm. you've gone, okay, I want to figure out who to get in touch with and then write the entire series of emails. And that's a whole sequence of prompts. And I think whether or not I like this person's approach is kind of irrelevant because the point here is that you can chain together a whole series of ideas to create one long workflow. But right. you could argue or tweak this workflow uh, based on how you do sales. So doing cold outreach is something I've been doing a fair amount of recently just to kind of get feedback on the product, not necessarily to sell it, but to say, hey, this is an idea of something I'm developing, would love to get your take on it. And I've been getting feedback on how to do that from a bunch of different sales professionals. And there seems to be wildly different opinions on how to do cold outreach and sales, right? So, yeah, I agree. So, so like the first thing that I learned, not just this time, but like kind of relearned from kind of diving into the space is that like 80% of cold email is figuring out who to send the emails to, right? You could write the worst email in the world, but if you <laughs> get someone, like it could be spelling mistakes, broken English, but if you get the person who's really dealing with that problem and you, and you find their email and be like, hey, can I help you deal with this? They're going to be like, of yes. course, like this, I'm, I'm literally trying to deal with this right now. <laughs> so, so he just kind of skipped over that and said, give me a list of HR companies. And I think that at least according to some of the people I've spoken to, a really bad way to approach yeah. writing cold email, uh, approach cold email, because he, the emphasis here is on the wording of the email, not on the target. And I don't know if uh, ChatGPT is necessarily the right tool, because even for how he used it, find me a list of companies, it's going to be outdated because 2001, uh, 21, uh, the cutoff. Uh, but there are better tools out there like Crunchbase or Apollo for kind of figuring out, okay, this company, this amount, th this number of employees, they're at this round of seed funding, you know, this specific person in this company. Like, yeah, if I spend 20 hours putting in a cold email campaign together, I'm spending 10 to 15 just figuring out the list of people to send the email to. I suppose ChatGPT could help with researching who, okay, here's 20 people in the company, which one makes the most sense to send it out to. But, but I think the, the idea of like, okay, I want to sell it to Mercer. Uh, what is the contact at mercer.com email on their website? That's not going to work. Like, I'm, I'm not surprised not because, that you yeah. didn't give stats on how well this performed because that sounds like a terrible <laughs> way to approach. Well, to be <laughs> fair, the, that kind of work he was doing in his in his emailing software, right? Hunter sure. IO was going into the websites and searching for the emails of the people, yeah. uh, which, which he did show had success, right? Got it. Um, so he was able to, with that technology, just like cipher through a list, filter through the list and look at all of the emails of the different positions right. of the people within that company, right? So it just wasn't ChatGPT doing that, but he he did, so I didn't emphasize it here, but he did do that step. But but I, I definitely like see where, see where you're going with that. Like if we could get ChatGPT or let's say another, you know, technology to do that work, it's probably definitely where the focus should be.
Got it. Okay. Sorry. I take that back. If he, so you're saying he was leveraging Hunter IO to do a lot of the targeting work there. Got it. Yeah. Write the email. But so I, I think the same applies. Like some people uh, that I got feedback from over the last couple of weeks are like, look, you really want to explain where you're coming from and kind of mm -hmm. be verbose about it. Like, why are you asking me for this call? Whereas other people were very much of the school. Look, you just want to have two sentences, describe their problem and then ask if they want to know more because the whole point of the first email is just to get into the conversation. So there were two very different schools of thought. And I don't mm -hmm. think that chat GPT should really be making the decision on which school of thought you should be applying to your campaign or to yes. your essay or to, you know, like chat GPT is not qualified to tell you the style of writing that you should be, or like how you should be outlining or, or approaching it. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Uh, but if you have an opinion on that and you say, okay, I want to follow this school of thought, then right. chaining a bunch of prompts together can be the workhorse that kind of gets the whole thing done for you. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. Absolutely. At least that's how I'm starting to use it or how I'm starting to find people using it. Or in this case, if you don't agree with this particular sequence of emails, don't throw the process out. Just modify it right. for, you know, whatever school of thought you follow or whatever steps you think yeah. needs to go into the sales process. Got it. Fantastic. So this is a chain of prompts along with other tools that you can use to kind of target and then send out a whole sequence of emails to get cold, to, to warm up. Next question, prompt two was what do they not care about in these environments, right? So things that you might not focus on in your pitch. So again, it gave me about four things that they're typically not concerned about, you know, like non-essential features of your product, um, long impl implementation timelines, things that they basically do not want to see <laughs> or sure. do not want to hear. Another good thing to prepare yourself for the pitch, right? Prompt number three, this is a seven chain prompt, by the way. Um, it gets pretty detailed and all of them are kind of feeding off of the, the one before, right? Okay. Um, so based on these two questions, what are the top two value propositions that will cause people to buy because they generate the highest ROI? It gave me the top two, right? Sales performance and sales pr process optimization, which are two of the value propositions that I included in my first prompt, by the way. So okay. it kind of moved it back to that first prompt, right? Okay. Um, so we can kind of see that it's moving forward the process and it's looping back. And then his last prompt was kind of supposed to tie all of this together, go for the sales pitch or let's say the, the deck, right? The, the sure. presentation based on all of this, what would be the top 10 slides to include in a deck to pitch my services to address both use cases, highlighting top priorities and the needs of the VP of sales and the CFO? I mean, I suppose yeah, they would be so talking points. <laughs> like if you were doing it in a presentation, it wouldn't be verbatim word for word. You'd kind of like have those as talking, talking points. points. That's sure, it. Yeah, sure. exactly. But um, I mean, something that you could put on, on a slide, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, this is a really good example. My, my takeaway here is if you're using ChatGPT to make sales decks, and you're trying to do that with a single prompt saying, give me a 10 slide sales deck on X company or, you know, this target with these priorities, and you're not quite getting close to what you want, yeah. you find that it's a very generic sales deck, then this is an alternative where, look, here's a seven part series where you can think about, okay, what are the priorities here? What are the objections? What are the main concerns? What's the angle? Use that information to construct something that's a bit more bespoke to the actual job or thing that you're trying to sell. So yeah, if, if you're someone watching this or if someone reading this article and you're kind of like, I've heard it's really good at helping you with the sales process, but you're still trying to single prompt the situation. Th this is a really good solution. And yes. like you pointed out, it doesn't get you all the way there. You can still totally modify each of the prompts yeah. at the end, say, okay, like add this, in, like actually use all the information we've put together at this point. But yeah, that's fantastic. I, I suppose finding the exact sales process that works for you, again, would come down to the school of thought thing, but like, how did you do in sales? What are the individual points? But it, it, this is a really good outline of like how to then use ChatGPT with a more complex process that you want to follow. So like objection that I'm used to hearing now, when I speak to people who have tried ChatGPT once or twice, they're like, oh yeah, but it doesn't write in the way that I write. Um, you know, it, it just doesn't approach writing in the way that I write. So it's useless to me. Whereas this is, it totally can, you just need to outline how you do sales and then it can kind of follow along and follow your process for it. Got it. So this is closing the sale. This is more practice presenting. This is closer to the recruitment article that we did where, you know, so someone was asking ChatGPT for a list of questions on a certain role or position that they may not know a lot about, but it was a, essentially refining your thinking or refining your argument for a live presentation. So it's, it's a, a thought sparring right. partner. Um, Whereas the other situation here, uh, putting the cold email sales campaign together, that's a workflow that you can actually start off and say, okay, we're targeting these people. And then at the end of it, you have like a, a 17 part email sequence and a list of emails. Yeah. What and I would you know, like one thing that I will say also about the whole results thing, because I think, I think it's hard to find people that are like going through and giving examples of their specific prompts or prompt series or like what they're doing with chat GPT and then take it all the way through to the results. I, I, I've yet to really see somebody do that and go all the way through and say, this is the exact result I got, right? But yeah. 
Having said that, there are like several other articles that let's say are just talking about ChatGPT that aren't specifically giving prompts or whatever, but they have given some of their results. Yep. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, this is great. Thank you very much. Uh, Ooh, so yeah. two really good examples that I can point to. Um, and yeah, as, as I'm starting to find now, it's not the specific examples, it's more the approach of using it to do multi-step workflows and then, you know, whatever your workflow is, you can adapt into it. Fantastic. Nice one. See you next week. Thanks.